Okay, so I think, I think, guys, that everything is working now. I'm on my new computer. We're recording right now in 60 FPS and it's Terra Firma Craft Reloaded with Dankenstein. So welcome. Welcome to the next stage in technological advancements for Dankenstein. And this computer's really beastly and I guess Minecraft isn't the game to show it, but you're going to see it when I play like other games down the line. Okay, so this is episode number 59. Episode number 59. It feels smoother. Like, I don't know, is it smoother? It feels smoother. It feels like we're getting more frames even just in the gameplay, to be honest. I never play with a, with a frame counter, so I don't actually know. But, yeah. This does look... Does look smooth. Should we take... Should we just finish this project? Should we start this episode by finishing the digging of this hole? Let's do it. Let's do it. So big plans for this episode though, because now that we are with a uh, computer that can handle it, uh, of course what we're going to do is try and push that to its limits. So I thought it might be nice to see if we could have a little explore in our world today with some shaders. So we're going to try that at the end of the episode. I'm going to get my work done first before I break everything with shaders. Probably want to mess around with our dimensional transceivers and we did some work on that on the stream last uh, last week and we're in a position now where I think we can kind of start to make things happen um, so after we've done this little task that's kind of the main thing we're gonna do um, uh, there's also some stuff to do with chicken that I would like to maybe start today so actually there's quite a lot quite a lot of things on our plate so let's see let's see how much of it we get through um, but for now let's uh, drop a beat and just finish this off <laughs>
okay so what was that so i just did a 35 minute segment of recording um to get that whole kind of uh time lapse for you there and this is the first test i wanted to put this new computer through so you're, you're like you know we're recording in 60 fps now can you record for half an hour straight looks like it can this is i'm still in the original file i haven't like cut to come back in with the commentary now so right now we are just approaching the 35 minute mark on this particular file so it's probably going to be a big one in fact i might stop the recording now just to check the size of the file <laughs> Ooh, you guys okay that was cool so that that file 35 minutes of 1080p 60 fps came out of 15 gig so it's very manageable so that's cool so it means i've got more than enough disk space i can easily yeah i can easily record uh all the normal volumes of footage that i do on a on a day-to-day -day basis at 60 fps without worrying about running out of of space or anything so that's good and i just thought i'd take the uh, opportunity to fill in the uh the bottom of this with chiseled blocks just because it looks kind of cool it's great somebody mentioned on the stream last week but it is cool to see the uh, ore generation like this from a quarry um, quite a small vein because it's thinning out already so that was a really small vein actually but um, anyway we've got another 15 pieces to chuck in and we've obviously as you saw got way way too much uh, smooth schist now and we've even overflowed up into this <laughs> chest here which is really uh, well we'll probably completely forget about those there and like in like 10 episodes we'll come to use the crusher and all items will come flying out and we'll be like why why is it full already oh okay that's why so we got like another 20 ingots of zinc out of that too okay uh 22 ingots of uh, zinc to be precise there shut those on <laughs> and so yeah we what do you want to do first then should we look at chickens first or should we look at metal first let's look at uh metal first and then chickens and then we'll finish with shaders okay that's what we're going to do so on the stream the other day i think all my tools are still down by the big hole we've been digging by the palace oh well but look up here look there's like a thing here that we did <gasps> fluid tanks immersive engineering fluid tanks so these cost quite a lot of iron but we've got tons of iron and we filled this one here if you can see i guess it's not really showing us I think you can just about tell because that window there is black whereas that one is like more grey that this tank is empty and this tank here is full of crude oil of the main oil of this stuff it's totally full and I think everything we have left yeah yeah everything we have left is in that is in those two those two open blocks tanks above which I don't know if they'll automatically empty in or not but they're, the, they're there for safekeeping anyway and it does look kind of cool it kind of I you know maybe we should add two up here anyway the plan is is that then it comes into the uh, like it will teleport from the oil rig in its pure raw crude form into this uh, fluid tank which is the big buffer and then it's going to come out of this bit here and what so what we want to do next is set up these guys and this whole process of purification here and then out of here where this is going to be the refined oil goes into the diesel generator and then the power comes out of the top of the diesel generator into our dimensional transceiver okay one or the other of them <laughs> so there's gonna be one dimensional transceiver up here that the power is gonna be going into but also coming out of that dimensional transceiver is going to be the oil that goes into here so yeah there's a, there's a little bit of work to do up here and working out how all this stuff fits together but that's the plan I think that the most efficient thing to do will be to just stick this guy there and it is indeed powered right now Are the other two the other two aren't I don't think Oh, they are. And look, they just consume... Okay, so this one hasn't yet been hooked up. Wait, what is going on? Okay, it seems like none of them are hooked up. But they just have power left over in them, these two, from, from the stream the other day. So we can hook them all up to one another. But as you can see, they do cost power 
just simply to have running. So there's also some, probably some need for us to have some sort of override switch. So that they're only on when they need to be active with signal. There we go. Right, okay, so we want our transceivers set to active with signal so that we can have a switch that we pull that switches them on when we need them and then when we switch them off they don't waste power. That's That feels like a big element, a big like part of the whole puzzle here, right? Both like that. I think that's okay. And we just need cabling that will come out of there into those two and then some cabling that will come out of those and up and into the top of this guy. Always. And there we go, those fill up fine. Those are just inserts. So that's the first bit done. <laughs> These need powering. Yeah, okay. But this thing isn't switched on right now. Or doesn't have any power or something. Both, probably. Are we gonna literally just have enough? I think like we, we literally just have enough. Always active, yeah. So that should now work. If we started powering this, I think it would work. And so then it's just a case of we need more fluid conduits actually so we can come out of here and into there, don't we? Or indeed out of here and round and into there. If I've remembered all this correct, there we go. Eight more fluid conduits I think will will be enough. Right, and so you see all this jumping up here we're doing. I think a quality of life improvement here would no doubt be a elevator, wouldn't it? Oh, God damn. Yeah, okay, so somewhere like there would be a good spot to put some of those open blocks elevators at some point <laughs> to avoid us having to climb this thing twice. It just thinks every little part of it's a machine, doesn't it? But it's not. So I think, like, if we were to give the whole system a kick, and what I mean by that is, like, we need to, we need to start the thing, which I think means we need to bring one of our spare power cells up here. In fact, there it is, look. Because if we were to power these, I think then the whole thing will start. So those are going. And now this is, and the fuel should be, I would imagine, just coming right out of both of these, straight into there and straight through, and it, and this thing's now burning, burning that fuel, yeah? Those aren't emptying, automatically at least. If we pick these up, there we go, right, so when we're holding something we can see what's in there, so you can see it is burning through that oil right now, and I, I think now we should... In fact, look, this is not being used anymore. It just, it, it was like a jump start. <laughs> and once it got those going, as we know, um, this guy can certainly fuel those plus an ore excavator, absolutely no problem. But if we were to switch that off then, well, it gets quieter in here. Those no longer have power. If we were to give them power, they, would, they should start filling up this, no? But I think this probably has a buffer in it, which is probably now filling. Once it gets full, I'm hoping I start to see see the stuff appear in this tank, no? Okay, so maybe the uh, maybe this guy doesn't, or maybe it has a buffer, but it would just keep wasting the fuel. So if we say that should can only be active with signal, this immediately starts filling up. I mean, maybe that's actually where the... Hmm. <laughs> this is interesting. Okay, rather interestingly, I've just read that we can mirror the generator by clicking the, by using the engineer's hammer, I think probably here. There we go, that just mirrored it, didn't it? Everything else stayed in the same place. Sorry, it's gotten dark again. Okay, yeah, so look, everything else has stayed in the same place except that now our lever is over here. So far this all seems good and this seems to be working and if we were to put the Dimensional transceiver there. I'm sure it would suck lots of lovely GC power out of the system while switched on. 
But I guess we do want to leave this running off of capacitor power anyway, just so that we can fill our buffer. We do want these buffers filled, otherwise if stuff's just passing through them every time we switch it off, it all pauses. And we actually don't have the buffer to kickstart it with and we'll always need something like this. We also got to bear in mind that the items we're going to pipe back will come out here. So we need some kind of item processing uh, system, which I imagine we could build down in here. You know, some kind of uh, big item filtering type thing. I guess the easiest way to do that is probably just with Ender IO conduits, isn't it? And put the filters in there. I don't know. <laughs> it's pretty cool over there, though. I'm feeling it. <laughs> okay, so this is the, the bird's eye view here, and it does look great, doesn't it? That extra little platform there. I think if you come over this way a bit, and then look back at it, when the, uh, when the tanks actually load in, yeah, it really, really does look very cool. So we know with the transceivers that we can stop them from wasting power by having them set to active with signal. But will that signal spread wirelessly <laughs> as well? Like, I think we just, uh, there's a few experiments we need to do here. Okay, so I've just like filled this guy up with power. Even though it's on active with signal mode, it will still accept the power and fill up its send receive buffer. So it can hold up to 500 basically. They're both set to active with signal. So here's the question. If we link them up by creating a new channel and we'll just call it like power test, yeah? Add that one in and we'll make this one send. Because this one is going to be receiving all the power and wanting to send it out. And then this guy is in here and it's like receiving power test, yeah? Now, active with signal. So can we pop our lever on here no, okay, not from, from, at least not from that angle. Okay, so with some blocks then, maybe we can test this. If like, if we put one of them there. Okay, it's like centered all over. It's not filling up the send receive buffer any further because it fills up because this one doesn't have signal. If we were to go like this then, just to confirm my theory, now it starts filling up its buffer no it's not filling it up it's removing it from there unfortunately confirm something I was a little bit afraid of which is that we can't wirelessly disable these guys can we that's one experiment anyway I mean we've certainly done a good amount of, of sort of setting up here I'm gonna leave this running I don't mind if this capacitor bank empties in order to fill our buffers here my concern is so my concern is just that once I set one of these guys up over at the oil rig then it is going to be permanently filling up its f at least it's 250 but probably the send and receive buffer too so we're going to be losing up to 500,000 RF every time we switch the system off because the RF that's in the um, dimensional transceiver at the oil rig is gonna like just waste away all of its storage unless we can flick a switch on it like we've done just here to, to stop it to make it unactive but to do that, we have to go there, which defeats the, the wirelessness of it. <laughs> okay, so that's my conundrum here. I think it's a reasonable conundrum. Um, and I think maybe we'll talk about it on stream tomorrow because this episode's running quite long already because I'm just excitable. And we've still got two more things to do. So let's look at uh, chicken now. So I don't think I've shown this yet this episode, but on the stream last week, we also built ourselves a chicken coop here. And we actually found quite a lot of animals uh, last time, as you know. But chickens were still on the agenda, and we found some chickens, so we brought them home. And I think the coop's looking all right. It kind of fits the style of the local area, while still being quite chicken coopy. It's kind of got a nice curved sort of, yeah, shape to it. I, I quite like what we've done here with this design, and obviously this feels very authentic. And see if we can get in and out without anyone escaping. We can. So we've got a rooster. And we've got two hens. Fertilized egg in there. A fertilized egg in there. Can we just eat that straight out of the That's a bit that's a bit savage, isn't it? Oh now we've removed it, it is not gonna be a chick anymore, it's just an egg. But we can't eat it as it is, we can't eat it raw. So maybe I shouldn't have removed that one. 
So that's what's happening here. So we're not going to worry too much about this now until we just have more chickens, right? What we do want to do is we basically we want to have a fried chicken shop because I love me some fried chicken. And over here... Oh yeah, look, we put creeper heads on the, on the entrance to the pub. Nice. Over here is where we're going to start to develop more of the town, right? We just go up here like this. We're going to get a much better view of what's occurring. So if you think we've got the farm down there and the path looks amazing actually from up 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 top. Yeah, and if you've got a pub there, then the barn and the farm farmland starts there. We've got this kind of music concert venue which we're going to build around. We're going to turn this maybe into like a sort of theater kind of chapel type build some sort of yeah some sort of live performance type venue there arts center a community center but in here we're going to have this kind of town center then the path's going to come through past the pub town center and a few other buildings here one of which i want to be a fried chicken shop and i think it was rachel who came up with the legendary idea on the stream to call the chicken shop tfc but to have the logo kind of look like a KFC logo, right? Um, and I think I'm going to go one further. I think on the stream then we said we'd, we'd, we'd call it TFCFC. Terra Firma Craft Fried Chicken. TFCFC in a nice KFC style logo. So, so <laughs> that's what I want to do today is start to just decide where that building goes and, uh, and what we're going to put you know, on the front for its logo. So we got like Dankensteins like that, or Drankensteins. So we'll do a similar thing, I suppose. We'll need a red background and we'll need some white blocks on top. White blocks that we can chisel. So first thing that's sprung to mind as absolutely was quartz. It's probably still defined as like a stone type, isn't it? I don't know. Uh, no, we can't, we can't chisel the quartz blocks. Okay. You know what? Something smooth, like smooth marble or something. Yeah, that one. The marble's got a little bit more red. That's a little bit greyer. The marble's a bit brighter, but it's a bit red. I'm sure 10 blocks would be more than enough. And then we would need a red background. And there was one thing that sprung to mind straight away for a red background. And that was what we used to make our beacon blocks out of. Oh. Not ideal though, these guys. We were going to probably eventually turn all these into blocks anyway. In fact, we certainly were for our next beacon, so it doesn't matter that much to do that now. Problem is, it's not a solid red, is it? Okay, so we have these red anti blocks from the chisel mod. I don't know where they come from. Oh, okay, like glowstone or something. But, but like. They seem to have a border on them. I guess we could check. If they don't have a border, then they're probably perfect. Ah. They do do what we want them to do. Okay, we might need... We might need many more of these than we thought. I think we're going to abandon those in that case. Okay, I think what we should be doing is putting this into lime water to make the paint, because it's more efficient, but... To save us time right now. Let's just do this. And then we just need to pick a spot for it down here. So I do think... I think we're right to say that we'll have some kind of a town centre. So I think it wouldn't be weird. I think probably a good spot for it is next to the barn facing the other direction. Yeah, this is where the KFC will go. <laughs> I should, I, let's, let's abandon the, uh, the brand name now. Let's use our own brand. This is where the TFCFC is going to go. And... It's kind of going to probably not come back quite this far. We'll just do a rough footprint of it now out of logs because I've got them on me. Okay, yeah, I'm going to move it one higher and one more to the left to really lean into it not being centred. Because if I imagine these chicken shops in my head, they often are like that. They've got a big logo on one side and then the door and maybe like an irregular shape to the front as well. Okay, yeah, so look, so I stared at this for a while and decided that I should just actually do a design in some art software, which is what I did. And I worked out that I need a bit more room. Basically, if we're going to go too high with it, which I think we want to have the letters be nice and big, then for TFCFC, we need more length. Like, or, you know, or we make it all shorter, but then I just think that's not going to be as impressive. So we're going to make another batch 
um, of this stuff. We only need to use six of them, I've calculated, not all eight. But we obviously need to make eight anyway. So one, two, three, four. We should extend our platform here then, I suppose. So we can get the final few on here. And I think, yeah, we'll just go into a time lapse for this. Might as well. It's kind of a nice thing to look at in a time lapse, I think. It's how I would like to digest this content if I was uh, the viewer. So, uh, yeah, we'll do that right now. Um, so enjoy. Guys, I think after a couple of errors there, <laughs> more than a couple I suppose, I think we're done. We might want something a bit more of a solid white colour and do that again. But it's a good design, I think it, you got the slanted text, it was quite difficult to get right. Um, the further away you go the better it looks. Yeah, TFCFC. <laughs> okay, cool. <laughs> we'll come back to this build one day. <laughs> Oh wow, look, I'm just checking up on over here now. We've nearly half filled this tank and we've nearly half emptied that one, I suppose. It's good to see there's a nice one-to-one -one there. Presumably if we came over here and took these two out, yeah. I bet we can chuck these in now. So 33. Oh, they really didn't have very much in them at all. Anyway, that's fine. They're filled up now. This is all happening, but look, I think guys, I've overrun drastically today and it's quite late in the day and I want to edit this and upload it today as well. Um, big shout out to Poseidon uh, in the Discord who massively helped me get everything set up on the new rig today. Shout outs. Um, but I think what, what it means is we'll have to do shaders tomorrow. That will be a bit of fun to have uh, on our stream tomorrow the classic Tuesday stream so thank you very much for watching as always I hope you've enjoyed 60 FPS it definitely feels very different for, for me to play I used to play with 60 but I don't think I used to get 60 and I used to record in 30 but now I'm recording in 60 and it really feels like I'm getting 60 when I'm playing too so yeah fun fun thank you for watching take care and I'll see you all very soon all right peace